Hey everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and welcome to My Storybook's new Book a Day series. This week we are celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, which means that this week we are going to be reading stories together that feature Asian American or Pacific Islander characters. So May is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, which means that it's a month where we are going to be celebrating and appreciating cultures, traditions, and the history of Asian Americans in the United States. So I have a whole lineup of fun reads for us this week and also stories that will teach us a little bit about different cultures of different Asian countries. I am Asian American and I am half Vietnamese and half Filipino. And so this month is an important month for me to really take some extra time to think about what are some traditions my cultures do. Also think more about what is the history of my family coming to the United States and my family back home in Vietnam and in the Philippines. Now remember that during a Book a Day series, I share a new interactive read aloud every day of this week at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. if you're on the East Coast. And if you're in a different time zone, you're going to have to look it up. But I'm kicking off the week with one of my favorite read alouds because it has to do with art. It's written by a Vietnamese author and it has the most magical creative illustrations by Dan Santat, who is part Thai. Now this read aloud today is going to be about two people who speak two different languages and about how they communicate and still find a way to talk to each other and share information or share things about themselves. So my friends, language is the words that you speak and some people who are from different places than you might speak a different language. They use different words to communicate, words that you probably won't understand because it's a different language and different words than what you use. So the language I am speaking right now is English. My friends, some of you watching might speak English too. Some of you might be learning to speak English and are listening to this. And some of you speak more than one language. What languages do you speak? Very cool. Well, my friends, have you ever met or talked to a person who speaks a different language than you? What language was it? And could you understand what they were saying? Well, if you couldn't understand what they are saying, my friends, how did you communicate with them? How did you share information? Maybe you couldn't, or maybe you try to use gestures, try to act out what you are trying to say, or maybe you could draw pictures. Well, in today's story, we're going to be reading about a little boy and his grandpa who speak two different languages because the little boy grew up in America and he speaks English, but his grandpa grew up in Thailand and he speaks Thai. So little boy and grandpa are going to be spending the day together, but they don't speak the same language. I wonder how are they going to be able to talk and communicate with each other? Any ideas, my friends? Kind of gave you a small hint earlier, and our title, Drawn Together, kind of gives us a clue, too. What do you think? Well, we'll just have to read and find out. Well, before we get started, let's take a quick look at our background in our studio today. You'll see there are some art things going on back there because I am an artist. I like to paint and draw, too. My friends, do you? I'm sure you are very creative artists. Well, back here, you'll see two pictures or paintings that I painted. This one, you'll see a beautiful sunset and a little boy climbing up the stairs to the heavens. I love using bright colors like these golds and purples, my friends. What colors do you like to use when you make art? Beautiful colors. I also have one here and it's about the ocean and you'll see these waves and lots of patterns in the waves. I like drawing patterns like polka dots and lines in my pictures to make it more interesting. My friends, do you use patterns and shapes in your drawings? Very cool. And then it has some markers because I like drawing with markers too. This is my sketchbook journal and it's kind of cool. It kind of looks like bamboo, huh? And you can open it up with the flaps. But I put some ideas in here, things that I like to draw. and. A little flower pen hanging out in my little flower jar up here. 
My friends, if you are an artist and want to go grab some of your drawing materials like papers and pencils or maybe even a picture that you drew and bring them to today's read aloud, that would be a great way to bring this story to life for you. And you can maybe even draw along with our read aloud today. So if you have some pencils and papers or colors, go ahead and grab them real quick or bring some of your own artwork and you can go ahead and hold it up and I can take a look. So go ahead, I'll give you a few moments. Or you can pause the video here. All right, let's see what you brought. Wow, you have a lot of artist things and your pictures look amazing. So if you have your papers and pencils ready and if you want to draw along to part of this story, then go for it, friends. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Do you? Let's get started. Today's featured interactive read aloud, the first in this week's Book A Day series, celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month is Drawn Together, written by Min Lei and illustrated by Dan Santat. And that name, Dan Santat, might sound familiar, my friends, because we have read some other books by him, too. Do you remember? Good memory. Well, Dan Santat is an author and an illustrator. So he wrote and illustrated After the Fall. Remember this one? You can check out my storybooks, read a lot of it. He also wrote and illustrated Beagle. And he illustrated The Princess and the Pit Stop. So he didn't write the words to this one, but he drew the pictures. So if you remember, my friends, these three books, you'll also remember that the pictures and illustrations in it were amazing. Dan Santat's actually won an award for his amazing illustrations. So I think you know that this means we are in for a special visual treat. Okay. Back to our story though. So Min Lei is a Vietnamese author and he wrote this story thinking about his connections with his own family and how people in his own family speak different languages and how it's not always easy to talk to each other if you don't speak the same language and use the same words, right? The illustrator, Dan Santa, is part Thai. And so then when he was illustrating the story, he also had a connection to it, thinking about his own Thai grandparents and how they spoke a different language than him. So we're going to see how their own family experiences influenced our story. So looking at this cover, my friends, there is a lot of cool things going on. What do you see? Yes, I see. So two characters here. This looks like grandpa and this looks like grandson. And who are those things in the back? This one kind of looks like a superhero. And then this one looks like a warrior, huh? But I'm noticing, my friends, kind of something different about how these two characters are drawn. This one and this one. What do you notice about how they're different? Yeah, this one is in black and white, huh? And this one's all colorful, has lots of colors, looks a lot younger too. This one looks older, huh? And I noticed this character is on Grandpa's side where Grandpa's standing. And this one is kind of where the little boy's standing and they almost kind of look similar, huh? Hmm. And if I look closely though, what do you see they're holding something in their hands? Kind of looks like little boy has this paintbrush that's black. Kind of like the black and white ink over here. And grandpa's holding this pen that's colorful. So what do you think that means? Maybe it could mean that grandpa and the son are sharing their supplies and sharing their different art styles with each other. I don't know. We'll have to read more and find out. Are you ready? All right. So here's our title page with our title, Drawn Together, written by Min Lei and illustrated by Dan Santat. And I'm looking here and it kind of looks like the illustrations are showing the stories already beginning. What is happening here? Yeah, it looks like here's the boy from the cover. And who do you think this is? Yeah, it kind of looks like this is mom and she's dropping off the boy and the boy's going to be going somewhere. Hmm, where is he going? Now, the thing about this book, my friends, is that it's told a lot in pictures. You'll see on this very first page, there's actually no words. So we are going to get to tell the story based on what we see in the pictures. And you'll notice when the pictures are divided up like this, this is how the pictures go. 
We start with this picture here, then you go down to this one, and then we go to this page and it goes from top to bottom. So this happened first, next, 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 next. I want you to take a look at the pictures first, my friends. One, two, three, four, five. And you go ahead, tell me what happens first, the next, 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 next. And then I'll share what I think too. Your turn to tell the story. So what happens first? And then Wow, my friends, great job telling the story and using the pictures in your own words to tell what's happening and what's going on. You are a great storyteller. So let's see, I see here's little boy and he looks like he's ringing the doorbell, huh? Ding dong. And who answers the door? Grandpa! And how does grandpa feel to see the little boy? Super happy, huh? And look over here, my friends. What are they doing? It looks like they are bowing to each other, right? They put their hands together like this, and then they give each other a little bow. And that is actually in Thai culture, one way to greet each other. It's a way to show respect and just a way to say hello. So if you'd like to try, you just put your hands together like this and then just give a little bow. And it's especially a respectful way to say hello to someone who's older than you. So they're saying hello and then, oh, who are they waving goodbye to? Mom. Bye, Mom. And then Grandpa welcomes him in and look at Boy's face here. How does Boy feel? He doesn't look super excited, huh? Kind of looks unsure, like he's not sure if he's happy to be there or not. Mm, so I see some words on this page, some speech bubbles, but let's go ahead and take a look at this picture first. <gasps> what is this showing us? Yeah, shows us what grandpa's eating and what the little boy is eating. How how do I know this one's grandpa and this one's the little boys? What clue is there? Yeah, my friends, if you look at the hands, these hands, it looks like grandpa's sweater and these hands look smaller, like little boy hands. And what are they eating? Because they're not eating the same thing. Yeah, grandpa's eating noodles with eggs. And Grandpa's using, do you know what these are? Chopsticks, right? Chopsticks are a tool that people eat to use, usually Asian food. And what do you think Grandpa's drinking? Is this tea? It looks like green tea because it's green. And what is the little boy eating? He's got a hot dog, some french fries, some salad, kind of like American food, right? And he's not drinking tea. He's drinking, it looks like juice. And does he use chopsticks? Nope, he's got a fork. So already we see grandpa and the kid have some differences going on. And so here they are. And how does grandpa and little boy feel? Because it also looks like they're not feeling the same. They look like they're feeling something different. Yeah, grandpa's happily eating. Probably happy his son is there. And then does boy look that happy? Not really. Boy says something right here. I see a speech bubble coming out from Boy's mouth. Boy says, so, what's new, Grandpa? And then Grandpa says, huh, wait a minute. My friends, if you look carefully at these letters, do they look the same as these letters up here? Have you seen these letters before? These letters don't look like the letters in our alphabet that we use in English. Huh. That makes me think that Grandpa is speaking a different language. So Grandpa's speaking Thai, but Little Boy doesn't understand that. Now, I don't speak Thai either, but in the beginning of the book, it has translations. It tells you what these Thai words mean. And Grandpa's actually asking, how are you doing? So Grandpa's asking, how are you doing? And kids asking, so what's new, Grandpa? And they're kind of asking the same thing, right? Just want to see how the each other are doing. But... Looking down here, can they answer each other? Do they know what each other said? Doesn't look like it, right? Because I don't see any new speech bubbles. Instead, I just see little dot, dot, dots, which in this case means silence, right? They don't have anything to say because they don't know what each other said. What do you think they're going to do? Let's see. What did they decide to do next? Watch TV. 
They're watching. And then look over here. Grandpa's kind of looking at little boy. What do you think Grandpa's thinking? Maybe thinking, does little boy like this show? And then, oh, here's what they're watching. And then this right here is Ty again, but this means dragon. So this guy's shouting dragon. And, oh, look, they're going to try to talk again. Here's little boy and he says, can we watch something else? And Grandpa over here, it's in Ty. So little boy doesn't really know what he's saying. Grandpa doesn't know what he's saying. But actually, Grandpa's asking kind of the same thing. He's asking, would you like to watch something else? At the same time, the boy's asking, can we watch something else? So interesting, huh, my friends? They're having the same thoughts and trying to ask the same questions. But since they don't speak the same language, it's kind of making them feel how? Probably a little frustrated, right? That they can't communicate and tell each other what they want and what they're thinking. Do they watch something else? No. They continue to watch the dragon show. Wait a minute. Then what's going on here? So there's no words on this one again, my friends. So it's going to be your turn first. Remember, we go from this picture to this one to this one. Next, next, next. What is going on? Ready, set, go for it. You are the storyteller. Wow. Great storytelling, friends. Let's take a look. So looks like little boy is tired of watching the show. So he's going off and you see these little lines. Grandpa's kind of like, what? And then what's above Grandpa's head? Question mark. So he's probably thinking, yeah, what is a little boy doing? Boy's got his backpack and what did he get out of his backpack? Paper and some drawing pencils, it looks like. And how does little boy feel about drawing? He looks happy, huh? That's, I think that's the first smile I've seen in this story so far from little boy. And he's drawing something and grandpa, what is grandpa thinking? Got that little question mark again. He's like, what is he doing? And oh, what did the boy draw? Looks like that little superhero from the front of the cover, right? And oh, look at grandpa's face. What, what do you think grandpa's thinking now? Grandpa's kind of got like an excited look on his face like, hey, he recognizes that picture. He knows what the kid's drawing. This is something he can understand. Hmm. So this page has no words. So these pictures, my friends, go like this. You go to this one first, then this one, then this one. So what is happening here? Yeah, so, oh, looks like Grandpa's going somewhere and little boy's thinking, Where's Grandpa going? And then, oh, Grandpa came back in. What does Grandpa have in his hands? Looks like Grandpa has his own sketchbook. And if I look over here, it says sketch. And I'm looking here, though, at what drawing tools that Grandpa is using. Do they look like the same tools and colors that the little boy was using? No. How are these different? These ones kind of look like paintbrushes right and what color are they black and then right here he's got this little bottle and what color is the bottle black and i'm thinking that this is his ink for these pens or brushes here and he's going to use this black ink to draw on his sketchbook hmm. so little boy has these colors grandpa has this black ink and oh, here's some words to our story right when i gave up on talking my grandfather surprised me by revealing a world beyond words. A world beyond words, my friends. What do you think that means? They are gonna create a new world that doesn't involve words. Instead, it's gonna be a world of pictures, it seems. You see this big streak that grandpa's making with his paintbrush? So they can't talk, but Grandpa is going to find a new way for them to communicate and share. And in a flash. <gasps> hey, these look familiar, huh? In a flash, we see each other for the first time. And my friends, they don't mean like actually see each other. Like, oh my gosh, there's Grandpa, right? No. What they mean is like now they can really see each other and communicate and share about themselves. 
through their pictures. So this represents who, little boy or grandpa? Little boy. And this is who? Grandpa. So this is grandpa who grandpa's trying to be. And this is who little boy's trying to be. And let's see what happens on their drawing adventure. Look at all of the things they are doing. All the things we could never say come pouring out. So look at all of these drawings and patterns and designs, my friends. Which ones are grandpas and which ones are little boys? And how can you tell? Yeah, I'm thinking that this black and white one and this dragon up here, that's not as colorful as grandpa's. And then all this rainbow colorful stuff is the little boys, right? Because he has the colors, grandpa has the ink. So they couldn't share all these cool things with words, but... What do you think they're trying to say with these pictures, my friends? What could they be sharing about? Yeah, those are some good ideas. Cool thing about art is that it can mean so many different things. So all these things that they couldn't say came pouring out, and we build a new world that even words can't describe. So with their drawings, they're able to share a whole new world with each other, my friends. And what do you see going on in this beautiful picture? Yeah, huh? Giant fish, all these beautiful mountains and nature, and there they are down here looking up at this huge new world they've created for themselves, a whole new world that they can finally share together. One that they don't need words, right? You can communicate through pictures, but just when we're closer than ever. Uh-oh, what is happening here, my friends? Yeah, it looks like something's happening and oh, I'm seeing this kind of creature here. It looks like this creature's interrupting, disrupting them. And what kind of creature do you think this is? Kind of looks like a sea serpent or a dragon or something. Uh-oh, what is this? What's going on? It looks like they're separated, right? Uh-oh, little boy's on this side. And grandpa's on this side. And here's this monster in between them, this big gap, this bridge between them. That old distance, so that old distance they felt when they couldn't share it with words, feeling far apart from each other because they couldn't talk with words. That feeling of not being able to share each other returns. And oh, wait a minute, what are you noticing though about what's on both sides of the picture, my friends? Here's the little boy, but who does this belong to? It looks like grandpa's paintbrush. And if I look over at grandpa's side, what's this? That looks like little boy's wand, his color wand. Wait a minute. So they're separated right now, but it looks like they have a tool from each other. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm. That old distance comes roaring back. So even though they found this new way to connect, sometimes that distance is still there. There's still that separation because they can't use the words to communicate still and maybe pictures don't always work and this dragon rawr, seems like it shows us is a symbol for the difference that gap they feel huh and here i see a different view here's a little boy and grandpa's painting stick and grandpa and the little stick here it comes roaring back but i think they're gonna find a way to defeat this dragon, this distance that separates them, that tries to keep them apart. Wait a minute. Ready? Here's the picture. Is this one, this one, next, this one, this one. What's going on? Looks like Grandpa noticed something, and Boy noticed something that was left on their side. <gasps> Grandpa notices the boy's little magic wand. He lifts it up and he's going to use it. And oh, what do you notice when Grandpa picks up the stick? What happens? He's turning colorful. And the little boy is like, oh, wait, he notices Grandpa's stick, painting stick. And he lifts it up. And oh, what do you notice to boy when he lifts up Grandpa's stick? 
he's turning black and white like grandpa, finding a new way to connect to each other, experiencing what grandpa experiences, and grandpa's experiencing what the little boy experiences, and this time, I'm not afraid of that old distance, that dragon that comes roaring back, trying to separate us. He's not afraid anymore. <gasps> Why not? Because I know that together, and it's going to continue on the next page, but oh my goodness, my friends, take a look at this. What do you notice? And if you see, here's grandpa, here's little boy. What do you notice? Yeah, huh? Wow. It's kind of like they switched powers, right? Or they blended, connected their powers, right? Here's grandpa in full color, like the little boy was. Here's the little boy in black and white, like grandpa was. But I'm seeing like those patterns of grandpa, so those squares are now black and white and colorful. And what's happening to that dragon? Are they defeating it? It looks like they're conquering that dragon, that distance, that thing trying to separate them. Because I know that together, the little boy says, we can make our way across. We can find a way now to cross that thing separating us, to cross that wall or that space that is trying to keep us apart. We can't talk to each other maybe, but what can they do together? They can draw, they can share through pictures. They found something they both have in common. And what's going on? Yeah, they found a bridge, they're crossing. So now after years of searching for the right words, we find ourselves happily, dot, 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 continues on the next page, happily speechless. Oh, my friends, it looks like they're back out of their magical picture world. They're in the house, but look at all these papers they have taped to the wall. What have they been doing? Drawing all these magical adventures together. And can you see, my friends, how the papers have both the black and white and the color, making me think that little boy and grandpa drew together, right? They did all these pictures together. So after all this time of trying to find those right words, now they're just happy, speechless. Not talking, but drawing. And how is this different than the beginning of the book, my friends, Grandpa and Little Boy? Yeah. In the beginning, were they this close to each other? No. Remember? How did Little Boy feel in the beginning? Kind of like, uh, didn't really know what to think of Grandpa. But now, now what? Oh, look how happy they are together. And so then, oh, the end of our story. Go ahead, my friends. Tell us how it ends. We go to this picture first, then this one, this one, next, last. Yes. Oh, what a sweet ending, right? So, mom comes back and tower grandpa and boy feel. Happy, right? They're happy to see mom. Mom's happy that they're so happy. Had some good times together. Mom's hugging grandpa. How does little boy feel? Happy, right? He's got a little smile. And oh, what's happened here, my friends? They exchanged or they switched their drawing tools, right? So little boy gets to keep this from grandpa and grandpa gets to keep that from little boy. They shared something with each other, something they can use to connect with each other. Grandpa's holding it up, saying goodbye. And what do you notice in the sky here? This cloud kind of looks like the drawing that they had, right? That they were drawing together. Grandpa's holding up the magical crayon from the little boy. The end. Ooh, and you look at this end paper with this dragonfish that they were drawing. The end, my friends. What a fun reading adventure, my friends. I really liked how you got to tell part of this story too because a lot of it was pictures. And what's fun about pictures without many words is that you can kind of tell the story however you want to because it's up to your imagination and it's up to how you think of what you see that makes the story special. And every time you read this book again, my friends, you can change the story a little bit based on how you're feeling or maybe you'll see something new in the 
the pictures and add a new detail. And what this really shows us is that just through pictures, you can share so many stories and so many thoughts. You don't always need words to share what you're thinking or to share a story. You can use pictures and drawings too. What was your favorite part, my friends? Yeah, those battles were pretty cool. And I think the message of the story was sweet too. That, you know, sometimes in some families that come from a different place, the parents or the grown-ups end up speaking a language that they learned when they were little from their own country. But then their own kids who grew up here in America speak English don't always understand what the older people in their family are saying. And that can feel sad, right? Because you want to be able to communicate with your family. Well, this book shows us that even if you can't use words, there's still always a way to connect with those you love. It can be through art, through pictures, through maybe doing something else that you both love. Maybe you both love sports and you can go play soccer or baseball together. Maybe you both love to play music and you can play a song together. My friends, what's something that you like to do with your grandparents? So if you couldn't talk to them, that's something that you could still do together and enjoy together because you don't need words to do everything, right? Okay, well, this was a great story to start off our Book A Week series, my friends. Remember that for Book A Week series, I don't always have a craft at the end of this story because I'm trying to get all these stories out to you this week, but be on the lookout for when the craft does come out. I'm always planning new crafts and adding them to my storybook on my blog. So to keep updated for when a new craft comes out, please be sure to follow me on Instagram, on the blog, on social media. I always send up updates. I even update the caption down below. So always be checking back in. You can find all those social media links down below. Also, to keep up with our new read alouds, my friends, please be sure to subscribe to my storybook so you can follow all of our reading adventures. Well, we've come to the end of today's book. So I hope you had some fun telling this story. If you want to watch it again and tell the story again, then go for it. Remember, it's always fun to come up with new adventures in reading stories. You are very creative, so it'll be cool to see what you come up with next. But otherwise, my friends, I will be back and hope to see you tomorrow for our next reading adventure for this Book A Week series. But until then, stay safe. Stay healthy. Enjoy your time with your family. Find some activities that you can do together that maybe you don't even have to talk. Things you can just do without words and still connect. Okay? All right. Well, until tomorrow, my friends. Happy reading.